Hey guys, it's Luke from DCAMCAT Prep, and I wanted to do a series on microbiology. I'm going to do this course at about the level of a Introduction to Microbiology course at a university, but I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to be covering it in 8 to 12 minute segments, and they're going to be well labeled, so that way if there's something you didn't quite get the first time, or that you forgot from your course, or maybe you're studying it and you just want another way of it, of it being explained, you can go through and you can just watch that video without having to sort through a 40 minute lecture. The other thing I want to say is that this is going to be a medically focused course. I'm going to be examining microbiology as it applies to medicine. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's what I understand the most. And to try to explain microbiology outside of that would be not as effective as me just trying to stick with what I know. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to the world of microbiology. This is probably one of my favorite subjects ever, and I'm really excited to cover it. But I like to start at lectures like these with kind of the Greek roots of the word to help you get a scope of what we're going to be learning. Uh, microbiology is split into three different roots, and that is micro, bio, and logi. And micro, or micros, is Greek for small. Bio is life, and logi is the study of. So here we're going to see it's the study of small life. And when you think about it, we're going to be talking about two different types, really. And it's kind of, there's three different domains of life in microbiology, and you can see it as the eukaryotic, prokaryotic, and archaea. And it's important that we understand this because when we talk about something like bacteria, we have to understand it's a prokaryotic organism, as that is, it doesn't have a nucleus, and it's usually unicellular and small ribosomes, and all that matters when you're talking diagnostic medicine. But you still do run into stuff that is eukaryotic and still has a negative effect on the body. But we'll get into that. First, let's look at the differences between a eukaryotic and prokaryotic organism. Um, first thing you're going to notice is that a eukaryotic organism has a nucleus, and that's even in the name, but we'll get to that later. A prokaryotic organism will not have a nucleus. A eukaryotic is usually multicellular, where the prokaryotic will be unicellular. However, there are is an entire form of eukaryotic organisms which is unicellular. Um, ribosomes, uh, they're the thing that work with protein synthesis, and in a eukaryotic cell that, uh, organism, they're going to be large, and a prokaryotic organism, they're going to be small. When it deals with chromosomes, a eukaryotic organism will have more than one, where prokaryotics will only have one. It's not even a true chromosome, but they also have genetic information in the form of a plasmid. And when we're talking about size, you have to remember that this isn't restricted. That is, it can be greater than 10, or greater than 100 micrometers, which is one a micrometer is one millionth of a meter and it can also be smaller than 10 so you have to realize that this is an all-encompassing it's just kind of the average and for a prokaryotic cell you're going to notice that they're more likely to be 1 to 10 micrometers in length and a prokaryotic let's talk about the Greek roots we're going to talk about prokaryotic first because it's a simpler one and pro is before and carrion which is not our kernel and in case you couldn't guess, the nutter kernel directly deals with the nucleus. So what you're going to see is prokaryotic literally means before the nucleus, which makes sense because it doesn't have one. And it's evolutionarily before the eukaryotic. Um, there are a couple different types of prokaryotic cells, and I have here a picture of a bacillus. And this is kind of just the common bacteria that you're going to see. And it's, I mean, common prokaryotic. But there's two different types, and one is archaea, and it's kind of the what we call ancient prokaryote, and it's kind of before the bacteria would have evolved, a uh, precursor to that bacteria, I should say. And then the other type is bacteria, and we'll talk a lot more about that later on. The other one is a eukaryote, and eu is true, and carrion is not a kernel, which again deals with the nucleus. So here you have a true nucleus, which makes sense because it has a nucleus. Um, there are two different types of eukaryotes that we're going to be covering. There are a lot more than that. There's animal and one other one whose name escapes me, but the two we're going to really focus on are the protists and the fungi. Um, protists are more commonly unicellular, and for just an example of one, you'll have like Plasmodium falciparum, which it causes malaria in humans, and fungi, you'll have all your fungal infections. So they're important to know, and we'll talk more about them in depth later. The last thing is viruses, and viruses is, its own viruses is, is in its own classification because it's not technically an organism, because it's not living. So we can't classify it as either one of them. The last thing I wanted to mention is a history. And a lot of your university level courses will 
do all of your microbiology history in one fell swoop. That is, they'll start from the beginning and then work their way forward and expect you to regurgitate that information. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to cover the different people in microbiology history as we go in the course. That way, you're not going to have a Lewin Hook by himself. You're going to learn about him as you learn about what he did. And the same thing with vaccines and different types of bacteria. That way, it has context to it. and You're not just trying to get it out of nowhere. So I hope you enjoy this journey into microbiology as much as I did. It's still one of my favorite courses. And uh, we'll see you next lesson.